you will need to answer this question. Now, according to the saying, an Englishman's ha an Englishman's home is his what? Is it his house, his castle, or his maisonette? The number to call, if you know the answer, is 0901 499 1200. That's 0901 499 1200. Details of the terms and conditions are listed on our website. That's itv.com slash this morning. Or you can find them on ITV1 Teletext, page 654. And don't forget, lines close at 5 past 12. So get calling and good luck. Now, the British apparently are suckers for gadgets. Well, our homes... Are. <laughs> our homes, more specifically our kitchens, are overrun with things <laughs> that we very rarely use. And I'm not just talking about useful inventions like this, uh, this very wonderful egg lifter here and this, uh, this terrific mushroom slicer. Britons spend millions, I want these, millions of pounds a year on kitchen appliances, but, but most of them never see the light of day. So with the help of Aggie McKenzie from Good Housekeeping magazine, we thought we'd uh, road test some of the most common ones that uh, we've actually seen whether or not they're worthy of shelf space and which should be banished to the bin. Um, it's blokes, isn't it? It is guys. It certainly is, actually. It's guys giving their wives presents, useless presents, that are going to clutter up the kitchen they'll never use, mm. maybe once. And it's also people with their New Year's resolutions thinking they're going to detox and, and buy these sort of grills that aren't going to be um, using fat or uh, juicers, so they're going to be giving them this extra healthy life. And why do they end up at the back of the, the, back of the cupboard? What's well, it's the easy to know why they end up at the back of the, uh, the, back of the cupboard, because um, quite often these things, we don't actually really want them to be part of our lives, so they're just too much faff or they're a real, um, mm. real nuisance to clean most of the time, actually. A, a lot of these parts time. don't go in the dishwasher, that's mm. right. And, uh, yes, exactly, women's uh, greatest enemy, lack of time. Mm. Let's, um, let's have a look at some of the things that we've got here. We'll, uh, we'll start, first of all, with um, juices. So, it looks like a fine bunch to me. Nadine Baggett is in charge of the, of the juicers. Do you have a juicer? I don't, and I've always wanted one for exactly the reason that Aggie just said. New Year's resolution, detox, want to be healthy, never quite live up to it. Well, you get healthy say. trying to scrub them clean, though, don't you? Uh, yeah, exactly, and most of my gadgets, and I've tried them in the time, are stuck right at the back, and they're just dusty and filthy, and they just get in the way when you want to get your saucepans. So, All right. I'm interested to try these. We'd like you to take these away. Okay. We'd like you to test them. We'll see you later on in the programme, and you tell us which one was, which was the best or whether none of them were any good okay. for you. Don't be okay. honest. All right, that's I good. will be. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Nadine. Okay, now next up is um, a selection of grills. Well, Alison Hammond is in charge of testing that little lot. And Alison, have you tried grills before? I haven't got a grill, but my friend Lauren's got one, and she had it last year, and she lost a lot of weight. She used it for the whole year. Really? So she lost a lot of weight from it. She got this one. The slim, lean, mean yeah. machine. So yeah. if you were to have a griller in your house, mm. how many times do you think you'd use it? And would it end Me up at the back of the cupboard? Yeah. It probably would end up in the cupboard because I've got a cooker. <laughs> I just bang it on the grill <laughs> in the cooker. I just can't be, couldn't be bothered to get it out, but I'm going to try it today and see. But she did lose a lot of weight on that grill, so... Mm. You've got to be persistent with it and you've got to use it all the time, that's the only thing. Away you go with your three grillers. Yeah, I'll see you a little bit later it. on. You can road test them and tell us what, uh, what you thought. Now then, last but uh, not least is a selection of coffee makers. Mm. So testing the coffee makers is a man that's uh, always full of beans, John Scott. Hello. Do you have a coffee maker? I don't because I believe drinking coffee is a social event and I like to pop down to the local coffee shop and sit and drink coffee and watch the world go by. <laughs> oh, I see. Got a lot of so time you don't, make, you don't have to make it at home. Uh -huh. that Sorry? You don't make it at home. No, I don't because I know what I'm like and I drink too much of it and I kind of get kind of, kind of addicted to it and I'd rather just have a... Um, you know, go out once a day and, and buy my coffee. And, yeah. Well, this would be interesting then to see which one of these actually seduces you, or you might say, no, I don't yes. want them. By the way, Aggie, what are we looking for when we have a piece of equipment like this? If we want a decent cup of coffee, an espresso cup of coffee, you need uh, to pay around £100 actually for a decent machine. You do really you? do. A pump operated machine that's going to force that water through at high speed and get the maximum flavour out of the coffee. The other thing to remember is that you need to think about the type of beans that you're using, Arabica rather than robusta and the grind and not to keep you open see, it's so much easier to pop down to Starbucks Ooh, and just let them make it for you or any other coffee shop uh, of which there are many and if you open the pack you've got to use it within two weeks otherwise the coffee goes flat and it's not okay. worth drinking oh. anyway now the interesting thing is that the Good Housekeeping Institute has also tested all of these so what our panel think compared to your panel uh -huh. may be interesting yes yeah. away you go <laughs> and test them a little bit later on we'll see you then now we're heading uh, towards the news still stacks to look forward to between now and uh, 12.30, including John Scott Shops Till He Drops in Paris.
good trip by mm -hmm. all accounts as well. Yeah, and you could be following in his footsteps. Plus, not so fantastic plastic Leslie Ash's lips are larger than life thanks to collagen injections. And Melanie Griffiths has been banned by her husband Antonio Banderas from all surgery. Find out what can happen when you go under the knife at 11. Blood on the cobbles. Oh, Coronation Street's Richard has struck again. Maxine and Emily became his latest victims last night. We meet the man behind the most evil character in Soapland. Brian Capron joins us live at 11.25. Plus, there's all the latest gossip from the street, the square and the dales, with Jackie Stephen at midday. And our clutterbuster has been hard at work. This is what this morning viewer Helen Gurley's house looked like before we got our hands on it. Find out how we made it clutter-free at 5 past 12. We look forward to seeing you after the news. Stay with us.